Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's been a good year for the movies, somewhat, with movies like Top Gun, John Wick, and now Mission Impossible, alongside Oppenheimer and Barbie, coming out together making it a movie fest for the cinema goers. We are going to review these movies, one at a time, and here is our review and the first reaction to the Barbie movie. Before we start the review, here is a little reminder that Barbie related stuff is on an exclusive sale online. You can now surprise your girlfriend and boyfriend with these gifts or you can surprise Barbie obsessive kids around you. You can do so by visiting the link in the description as well as pin in the comments down below. Happy Barbie shopping! Hey Barbie! Barbie's strength as a brand comes from her inspirational appeal. While some have slightly criticized the doll for setting unrealistic beauty standards, Barbie also showed girls that they can do and be anything. As different models have portrayed her as president, a rocket scientist, even trans. You know who else sets unrealistic beauty standards? Movie stars. Like Barbie, they serve as role models. Which is what makes Greta's take on the ultra-popular Twilight so darn smart. Margot Robbie might be a dead ranger for Barbie. But her moxie powers the performance. Greta has made the kind of a family film she surely wishes had been available to her when she was a girl. Sneaking a message. Several of them really, inside Barbie's hollow hourglass figure. That's an admirable achievement, given understandably a protective corporate parent metal. Though let's be honest, in the year 2023 it would be a shock and a box office suicide if Barbie arrived without some kind of female empowerment message back then. This one checks all the right boxes while making Ryan Gosling's Dum Dum Ken the butt of most of its gender equity jokes. Boasting fresh tracks from Billie Eilish and Lizzo, the result is very funny kids movie, with a freshman liberal arts student's vocabulary that tosses around terms like patriarchy and appropriation, pretty much everything but problematic, which the movie implies without actually calling Barbie's legacy. That's the front on which Greta and Noah Bumbach's script feels most daring. Barbie doesn't just poke fun at metal, it comes right out and accuses the best-selling doll of setting back the women's movement. As one indigent thing tells Barbie, you have been making women feel bad about themselves since you are invented. The reproach stuns Margaret Robbie's upbeat character who wakes up every day in the always sunny, hot pink fantasy world, where Barbies come in all colors and the body types. They win Nobel Prizes and occupy all the 12 seats on the Supreme Court and they are occasionally pastored by a dozen of Ken Tones who are clearly insecure about being sold and kept separately. Barbie Land, as it's called, is an inherently hilarious alternate reality modeled on the dream that metal has been selling American girls since the doll was introduced in 1959. It looks a lot like the one they have seen in the countless commercials, where flamingo bright Barbie dream houses inspire envy as a diverse collection of perky. Positive-minded dolls smile and wave at one another, represented here by such avatars as Alexandra Shape and Dua Lipa, Hizarai and Ritu Aryu, Hari Neff and Sharon Rooney. It's a wild pop art space. It's all but exploding with super-saturated colors where the doll's head appears lower contrast and backlit, obliging us to squint to make out the actors' faces. Although Margaret Robbie's blonde hair, fair-skinned, stereotypical Barbie seems to possess some abstract notion of herself as a toy. There is a major disconnect between the inventor Ruth Handler's best intentions and the state of things in the real world, where the movie spends roughly half of its time. Thanks to Barbie, all problems of feminism and equal rights have been solved. Mirren sarcastically summarizes. One evening in the middle of a dance party, stereotypical Barbie blurts out, you guys ever think about dying? The next morning she is horrified to find her teeth have flattened and the patch of celluloid has appeared. What could be threatening her near-perfect physique? The answer lies in the real world, where Barbie and Ken steer her pink Corvette, emerging at Venice Beach, wearing matching fluorescent hearts skating ensembles. Yes, Barbie is one of those movies like the Smurfs and the Super Mario Bros. movies, where imaginary characters cross over to the modern-day America, just infinitely more clever. Instead of using the premise as a setup for slapstick, Greta shows Barbie defending herself when some random guy slaps her butt. Getting a knuckle sandwich in return, the script is no less on the nose about its politics, and in any case Greta and Bombay's social critique seems more than reasonable. Their script merely emphasizes how loop-sided the real world remains in its treatment of women, 
club tour including Metal's corporate headquarters where a working mom named Gloria holds an entry-level job, while the boardroom is packed entirely with guys in suit. At the head of the table sits Will Ferrell, in what is easily film's laziest casting choice. Hasn't he played a dozen versions of this character before, most obviously starring as Lord Business in the Lego movie? Defaulting to Farrell means passing up a chance to create a memorable original embodiment of what kind of men runs corporate America. At the same time, Barbie is experiencing her rude awakening. Ken is busy fitting his empty head with all the possibilities that patriarchy entails. In Barbie land, Ken's job is a deliberately ill-defined afterthought, basically just beach, whereas in the real world, dude's rules, an idea he takes back to the Barbie land with pointedly absurd results. Brainwashing all the women into behaving like obedient housewives, the film's draggier second half gets both silly and unbashedly strident. As stereotypical Barbie seek help from Weird Barbie, a damaged goods doll with signed hair and messed up makeup who serves as the girly girl world's mofias like Sage. It is upsetting in a useful way to see Barbie confronted with the overnight impact of rampant patriarchy. A concept that has really looked more off putting than the frat boy fantasy caricatured here. Think of it as a misogynist alternative marketed by old school peer commercials, the polar opposite of Mattel's mid 80s, We Girls Can Do Anything Right Barbie campaign. While the Barbie's plot to take back the government, Greta gives all the Ken dolls an over the top musical number. I'm just Ken. I'm just Ken, where I see the love she sees a friend. Which is so amusingly self involved. It risks subwardly the very point that movie is trying to make. If Barbie is all about centering and celebrating women, why let Ken steal the show? Gosling is a good sport to play the slightly predatory, really helpless pretty boy as the spray tanned ex musketeer parodies his popular Hey Girl persona, flexing both his muscles and a range of facial expressions all but lacking from his recent work. If Margaret Robbie's Barbie sets an impossibly high bar for young women, the Gosling skin reps an equally formidable male model with his chiseled abs and cheekbones. The factor hasn't escaped Greta, who sets out to disrupt such unattainable aesthetic standards, calling out ways the doll's idealized design can harm self-esteem and encourage eating disorders, she crammed most of the critique into a single motor mouth monologue, which drew cheers at the premiere and which, on closer inspection, contains not a single controversial idea. In the end, the trouble with Barbie isn't that it goes too far, but that it stops short building to a conceptual scene between Barbie and her creator that inadvertently underscores one of the movie's few fallings. It's an intellectual experience, not an emotional one, grounded largely in audience nostalgia. The power of nostalgia ought not to be underestimated with a property like this. As much for Greta's approach skews toward grown women and gay audience who have owned the dolls and for whom she is embedded deep cut trivia and hidden references throughout. The movie was clearly made by people who understand how kids' imaginations work when they play with Barbies. Even if Greta uses the project as the delivery device for what sounds like an undergraduate gender studies lecture at times, most of its points are positive ones for young girls to hear, while those that earn the film its PG-13 rating will fly right over their heads as they feast on all the eye candy, including recreations of classic looks by Jacqueline Duran costumes and Sarah Greenwood production design. It's kind of perfect that Barbie is opening opposite to Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, since Greta's girl-powered blockbuster offers a neon pink form of inception on its own, planting positive examples of female potential for future generations. Meanwhile, by showing the sense of humor about the brand's past stumbles, it gives us permission to challenge what Barbie represents, not all what you'd expect from a feature-lengthy toy commercial. That's all for now, we are going to review Barbie in detail. Let us know what are your first reviews of Barbie and are you going to watch it again? We are going to review Oppenheimer as well and there will be a Barbenheimer exclusive as well. So give this video a thumbs up, like and comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like these.